This video provides an introduction to what a climate change response plan is and how this plan can be developed using an existed template that has been developed as part of this program. This template can be downloaded from the program website. To start, what exactly is a climate change response plan and why do you need one? A climate change response plan is a document that summarizes what your potential impacts from climate change are and how you can respond to these potential impacts. Climate change response plans are useful because they summarize all the climate change issues in one place and the process also of developing this can help identify key stakeholders you need on board in order to respond to climate change. Climate change response plans generally follow a similar structure. This includes an executive summary, some kind of statement of the methodology used in developing the plan, a summary of background information on climate change and of your particular area, key climate change priorities or vulnerabilities and how you're going to respond to them. The first section of this plan should introduce the reader to the purpose of the plan and how you went about developing it. This introduction should include a summary of what the plan contains and why you've developed it. The provided template has an introductory chapter that you can use as a starting point for developing your own plan. The methodology chapter should include the process you followed in developing the plan. You can talk about how you went about conducting a climate change vulnerability assessment, how projects were identified and how stakeholders were engaged. You'll see that the template has a methodology chapter that summarizes the vulnerability assessment process and how projects were selected. This can also be used as a starting point for your plan. The background information chapter is a literature review of different policies relevant municipal statistics and climate change related information used in the development of the plan. If there's an existing provincial climate change plan, this can be summarized in this section. You can also include a summary of key municipal development issues and municipal climate change related indicators. The template includes a provincial summary as well as some background information on district municipalities. Once you've completed the introductory chapter of the report, it's important to summarize the key climate change issues for your particular area. If you've already conducted a climate change vulnerability assessment, the results from this can then be included here. If you haven't done a climate change vulnerability assessment yet, it's strongly advised that you complete one. You can review some of the other toolkit videos which guide you through this process. You'll see that the template breaks the section up into sub-chapters per sector, for example, agriculture, health, biodiversity, and so on. And each sector includes an introduction to the chapter as well as the results from the vulnerability assessment. A summary from the entire vulnerability assessment is then provided at the end. The final part of the plan are the responses and the projects you've identified to address your priority climate change indicators. In this section, it's important to make a direct link between the priority climate change indicators as well as the projects that you're proposing. This can be done by developing project names that talk directly to your indicators. In the slide, we see how the priority indicator, Increased Impacts of Informal Settlements, becomes a project titled Manage Potential Increased Impacts on Informal Settlements. Projects are quite high-level interventions and they need a set of sub-projects to be implementable. These sub-projects are the kind of projects that are measurable and can be included as budget line into the IDP. When defining sub-projects, try to consider the following. Firstly, begin with an action word such as draft, implement, facilitate, or commission research. Secondly, be as specific as possible. For example, draft an alien invasive eradication plan for a particular community. Thirdly, avoid being too vague. For example, saying improve infrastructure. The sub-projects must be affordable and also be implementable with current staff and timeframes. The Climate Change Response Plan template includes a chapter per sector for the proposed projects and their associated sub-projects. There's an introduction per sector which contains key climate change issues in the sector and then a page per project which includes the projects as well as the sub-projects to go with these responses. Once you've completed your responses, you can go back to the beginning of the document to complete the executive summary. The executive summary should provide a short introduction to the overall response plan, highlighting why climate change is important in your particular area. 
It should also summarize your priority climate change indicators, possibly in a table, and also list the proposed projects and responses. When you develop the executive summary, try to be concise with text that can easily be pasted into other documents, such as the integrated development plan, as well as the spatial development framework. The climate change response plan template provides a guide and a structure that you can use for an executive summary. So you've now gone through the basic structure of drafting a climate change response plan. It's important to remember that the plan is only as good as the content you include in it and whether your key stakeholders have participated in this development. The next chapter in this series discusses how to get the right stakeholders to input into your climate change planning process.